Hello everyone, welcome back to Major Hi-Fi, I'm Luke. Today we have yet another IEM from C Audio. This is the Kaguya, please excuse me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. So previously I reviewed C Audio's Neo, which runs for about 1100. Uh, the Kaguya runs for 13.99, so a bit higher priced. These are of course both fairly high priced IEMs. Um, but yeah, so C Audio so far I've had very good experiences, and when I got this one, I had very high hopes for it. Um, but also, you know, I've only really heard a couple of their other IEMs, so I don't have a full picture of what they you know, really do. I just know that what I've heard thus far was really good, so I was hoping this continued that pattern. And yeah, let's take these out of the box and take a look at them. Okie dokie. All right. So, first thing we have, of course, is the IEMs, and these are in a Pelican 1010 Micro Series case, an extremely, extremely sturdy case. We've got a clip on the side here if you want to clip it to your belt or your bag or whatnot. And then we have the IEMs in here, so let's take a look at these. So these are absolutely stunning in my opinion. I love the kind of opal looking pattern on the back here. It's one of my favorite types of gemstone looks. We've got this uh, lavender translucent body. You can see all of the innards and whatnot, which I always love when an IM is nice and clear. I love to see what's going on inside. Um, yeah, absolutely beautiful. The Neo was also stunning. It was all gold flaked and everything. Very elemental looks on these. A lot of sort of like rock-like stuff going on. The Sea Audio stuff I've seen so far. So yeah, really beautiful. Definitely looks luxurious. Feels on par for the price point. Um, in terms of fit, these have a very nice molded ear shape that have minimal contact with your ears. They settle in super easily. They're extremely snug and tight which is great, so super firm fit, which is what you're gonna want with an IEM. Like any IEM, really, you're gonna want a tight fit, but you want a extra tight fit when you're paying a premium. You don't want these falling out and hitting the ground and breaking. And then these use a OCC Litz silver plated cable, which you've got this nice clear braided cable, and it's also very sturdy once again, and definitely very comfortable and very hard to tangle, which is much appreciated. We also get four sets of balanced ear tips, four sets of bass enhancing ear tips, and three sets of foam ear tips. In my last review, I did not notice a huge difference from the bass enhancing ear tips, but I do appreciate them, and I'm sure some people will notice a difference of some sort. Then we also get a 3.5 millimeter to quarter inch converter, along with a 3.5 millimeter female to two 3.5 millimeter male converter. And then we also get a handy dandy little cleaning brush for our IEMs to keep them nice and shiny. The Kaguya contains eight Sonian drivers per ear. We've got four electrostatic and four balanced armature. These are arranged in a three-way frequency division, so two of the balanced armatures are for the lows and two are for the mids, and then the electrostatic drivers are used for the highs. And these have a frequency response of 20 hertz to 40 kilohertz and an impedance of 28 ohms. So why don't we go ahead and talk about how these sound. So for their sound stage, sort of similar to what I said in my review about the Neo, which I'll link below, these have a very intimate, realistic sound. The layering is very organic and the way that things are placed feels like that kind of you know, live performance uh, sound. They do a good job of taking reverb and room sound and background elements and using that to create a good sense of ambience and kind of immersiveness around the sound stage. And they definitely extend far past the normal amount of width that you can achieve with an IEM, and they do a great job of kind of bringing some extra life to even already really, really well mixed songs and will definitely give that extra bump up to any song that maybe needs a little bit of extra width. They're definitely anchored to the sound stage with a fair amount of that definition and punch and snap. So even though we do get a very airy sound, it's very pointed and kind of attack heavy, I would say. Um, so it's got a nice balance of that kind of like holographic sound, but also that very upfront kind of impactful feel. And like I said again, overall that very organic in-person feel that makes you sort of have this much more up close and personal experience with the listen. Um, so whether you're listening to acoustic or electronic, it just sort of brings things into a more organic space. 
probably not the dampest sounding IEM with the way that it handles, uh, like I said, reverb and room sound, because it does definitely separate these out a bit from the rest of the elements. I enjoy this in the way that it kind of creates a new sense of space and a refreshing take on the song. But yeah, it's definitely a very uh, tight sound stage. And I would say it's left to right, back to front feel is pretty equally balanced. It's not overly spread while underly represented in the sense of depth or overly represented in the sense of depth, but then not spread enough. It's got a very equal sort of balanced all around sound. There's definitely somewhat of a neutral character to the overall sound of the Kaguya, um, but it's sort of presented, like I said, with this light spin on things, sort of um, with the Neo, which I guess I'm gonna come back to, because there was definitely some similarities between the two. But it was kind of that thing of giving you a little bit of a new perspective on a recording or a song, um, and definitely you know embellishing it a little bit in a, in a very pleasant way that I thought um, definitely meets the standard of this higher price point. Alright, so for their low end, this does not feel like an intensely bassy IEM. I wouldn't go and just be like, yeah, this is super heavy in the bass. It's probably a bit more contained um, and a bit more controlled on the low end, but it does have the ability to reach further down into those sub frequencies if presented with them. So it's got the reach, it's got the range, but it doesn't generally have the leveling to really boost it up a ton. Um, I don't think it needs that generally because this definitely is going for that very clean, tight sound, like I said. So it's not really going to let the bass take the reins too often. And I don't mind an IEM that lets the bass kind of really jump out at times, but I also am all for an IEM that keeps the bass in its space and in its place. That rhymes. Um, yeah, but that keeps the bass kind of at bay and in one area pretty consistently, and that's what this does. So I listened to Bjork's All Is Full Of Love. I've been coming back to the song with a number of IEMs. I've probably mentioned it in a review already because it's really great for a nice, clean, reliable bass sound. Um, you know, it's very sub-heavy, um, but also very well mixed. And also it's Bjork, so there's a lot of other cool stuff going on there for the bass to kind of interact with. And on this IEM, it definitely took a bit less of that rumbling, vibrating approach. I find a lot of headphones and IEM take this song and sort of go into this really, really heavy, intense, sometimes a little bit muddy category. These definitely cleaned up the bass. They took out any sense of that really intense rumbling. They left a little bit of it just on the bottom layer there but overall they definitely controlled it a lot as they expected. So they'll definitely give the low end a chance to breathe and to you know, perform, but they're not going to let it breathe outside of its sort of predestined uh, area of the frequency spectrum, and they're not going to intensely boost where it does sit. There's probably a light boost going on, um, and they don't feel subdued in the low end, just neutral. So. Neutral, very clean, very tight, definitely more so on the attack uh, heavy side than the release heavy side, um, but overall a very pleasant, clean bass response that I think a lot of audiophiles who want that really tailored, balanced sound will appreciate a lot. Hey guys, Luke here, just wanted to pop in and say that if you're enjoying this video, it would be great if you could subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when we make new content, and hit the like button, and leave us a comment if you have any suggestions or questions or anything like that. I would love to talk to you guys more. We would really love some help growing the channel, and you know, just want to make sure that we're reaching our audience and whatnot, so yeah, any support is greatly appreciated, and let's get back to the review. All right, so the mid-range was one of my favorite parts of this IEM because it's definitely a little bit boosted, especially in the high end. That one to two kilohertz range is given some accentuation, and that is something that I find a little risky because those areas can bring out too much harshness if they're overdone. Um, and they're boosted to an extent that on a lot of IEMs, um, even though it's not a high extent, they're boosted to a level that I might sometimes be a little bit averse to. Uh, but the way that it's handled and the sort of timbre in the mid-range is so clean um, that it works. So that sort of light accentuation is actually really pleasant. And why I say light accentuation and I keep saying subtle light, it's because nothing on this IEM is like intense. 
The high end, which we're going to get to next, maybe does have a little bit more pronunciation on its altercations and boosting than the rest of the frequency spectrum. But overall, there's nothing going on here that's super huge in terms of what's being modulated about the tuning. Um, and that's definitely a great thing if you want that organic, balanced, natural sound. So for the mid-range, it felt like that um, you know, I probably said this in my review about the Neo 2, they don't really sound namely similar and I'll get into the differences uh, at the end of the video, like the key differences if you're looking at both. But um, yeah, this felt like it went right up to that line where it was like giving the extra presence in the mid-range but avoiding uh, that sense of harshness or metallic uh, timbre. So I listened to the song, what is it, A Kiss Goodbye by um, Tae Shi. Highly recommend checking out her music, beautiful voice, great production. And um, with this song, it's got this really fluid, breathy vocal line. Um, and I found that the Kaguya brought out the vocal line a bit further from the mix, definitely separated it well and boosted that kind of high mid area of it. The low mid on these is a bit lighter on its feet. It's slightly warmed up and is giving us that nice kind of thin blanket over the low frequencies coming up to the high mid frequencies. So once again, on this song, um, it felt like it kind of gave the drums a little bit of added presence and a little bit of more body as they sort of subtly underlied the vocal line and gave it a lot of space to perform while still making themselves very known. So yeah, it just gave the song an overall extra gratifying sort of pop to the percussion and a nice satisfying extra presence and forwardness to the vocals while pushing those sort of nice textural elements forward. Further high end, this is definitely a distinctly fairly bright IM. There's a nice clear sense of shininess and um, glossiness going on in the high end. So especially with tracks that already have a lot of material to work with in the high frequencies, this is going to take those um, instruments or sounds or parts of instruments and definitely push them forward and give them extra definition. And similar to the mid-range, they're going to up that sense of texture and kind of breathiness, maybe poppiness and percussion and whatnot. Um, and that once again further contributes to the very organic, very natural, realistic sound of these by creating that nice uh, pronounced crispness in the high end. So I listened to Waitress Song by First Aid Kit, another great band to be listening to on any of your favorite headphones. Um, and sort of as I expected, this strumming sound of the guitar, the top end of the percussion, uh, you know, the pop of the snare. Uh, the breathiness of the vocals were all just elevated and brought forward and made a lot more apparent. And I appreciated that despite this noticeable accentuation, it definitely retained that really smooth silkiness throughout all of these boosts, and that's very important to do if you're going to be boosting the high end a fair amount. So if you're looking for a brighter IEM, these do a good job of boosting those areas without creating a sense of hissing or metallic timbre in there. So yeah, definitely a really great, well-handled high end. All right, so if you're looking at the Neo, it's about $300 down from this, um, but they're both fairly high prices, so $300, not quite as big of a difference between these two as it might be between a 300 and 600. Um, you know, if you're going from 1100 to 1400, it's definitely a different step, uh, but still extra money. Um, I would say that this feels a little bit stronger in the mid-range and a little bit lighter in the bass area. They do share that very natural organic feel. Uh, the soundstage on the Neo felt a little bit more redefining of the songs that I listened to on it, if that makes sense. This is a little bit more transparent with the imaging, um, but also maybe has just slightly less width and separation, but not by a large amount. But this was definitely a little bit more of a neutral sound in many respects than the Neo was, except for maybe in the mid-range. And then the Neo might be a little bit more subtle on its high-end boost, but definitely not by a large amount. And yeah, I overall think that these are both really, really great IEMs, and I think that they both perform really well. But the uh, Neo might have a little bit more of a hard-hitting sound in the low end, whereas this might have a little bit more of a hard hit in that sort of crisper, poppier, high mid-range and high-end. So overall, the Kaguya definitely delivers on the C audio reputation that I've seen so far. It feels like it has that really luxurious, fine-tuned sound you would expect at this price point. It's able to convey a very wide range of genres. In this review alone, I tested pop, experimental, 
folk music, um, and then plenty of other things that I didn't mention is in this uh, video, such as electronic and rock and all those. And it didn't seem phased by any particular genre, so it's very, very versatile, um, which is not surprising because of its more transparent, neutral sound. And it's also just not phased by any sort of unconventional production techniques or compositions. And its ability to bring a sense of realism and extreme immersion and engulfment to a lot of songs is very impressive and not easy to do. Um, and that has been done here in my opinion. So I think that this I Am is extremely impressive as one would hope um, for this higher price point. And I think that a lot of people are going to be head over heels for it. So yeah, those are my thoughts on C Audio's Kaguya. If you have any more questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I would love to hear more from you guys. You can also post in the Major Hi-Fi forum. I will below link my written review of these per usual, and I'll also link to Major Hi-Fi's IEM ranking tool if you want to compare these to many other IEMs of similar prices or different prices or other companies or from C Audio. Uh, check out the ranking tool, it's really great. And yeah, I will be back very soon with some more reviews and videos, and until next time, happy listening.